I certainly intended that um, people would, I guess what I hoped was that um, after reading the book, people would just think more carefully about what our relationship with animals is and has been. Uh, and I, I don't think that I had an answer, that I, that I wanted people to think in a certain way and to make certain decisions so much as I just thought um, so many of the ways that we use other animals and interact with other animals have such a long history that we're not thinking about them anymore, that we've, we've stopped noticing. Um, I, I honestly think this is a, that for me the whole issue ties into climate change as well, that we've, we've become um, so, so comfortable with our screens and our indoor lives that that we're not looking around the world in the same careful way and noticing what is happening. And, um, and the other animals are all very much a part of that. Certainly all of them will suffer the effects of global warming, although none of them bear any culpability in uh, creating the, the climate problems that we're now facing. So m mostly, um, I, I don't know if this is true in France, uh, I very much hope that it's not, but in the United States there are in certain states laws that make it illegal to show people what happens on the farms, uh, particularly the big factory farms, how meat is raised, how meat is slaughtered, um, what, you know, what the poultry farms look like. Um, this is something that, that we are not allowed to know. and. Uh, I think that was my main, uh, my main message in the book was just that um, that it, it's it's not acceptable to just remove things from our sight. That uh, that if we can't bear to look at something, we shouldn't be doing it. And that the idea of just ma deciding, well, we just won't look at it then, is not serving us or any anyone we share the planet with well. I, I think that um, one of the things that is so striking um, when you look at the history of research into animal cognition is how human-centric our models have been. So that if they cannot learn to speak English um, or French, um, we assume they have no language. And uh, you know the we are able to recognize intelligence as long as it resembles human intelligence. But the more alien it is, uh, say for an octopus or a honeybee, the, the less we are likely to notice it as intelligence. Um, again, uh, my daughter um, did some experiments with, with octopuses and, and, and they are able to demonstrate intelligence in a way that we can recognize so that there are puzzles that they can solve and um, uh, geographical cues that they can respond to. Um, but of course, beyond the things that make sense to us, there's a whole world of whatever um, they, uh, they are processing and how they are moving through the world that we will never have access to. It's, they, I, you know, I think it, it's understandable that we can only um, move through equivalence, that, that when we recognize something, then, then we can deal with it, then we know what it is. Um, but of course it is impossible to know ever really what is going on in the mind of another human being. So to try to understand what's going on in the mind of a chimpanzee, let alone an octopus, is never going to be something we can do.